Welcome back everyone, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. This video here I did a couple years ago and things have changed since. I only had about 30,000 subscribers, I didn't have the ICOM 7300, and there's a lot of new people to the hobby, a lot of new people that haven't seen that video, and I'm refreshing myself. I like to take these little things that I used to do or have done and get back into them and you know refresh myself, see what's changed, uh, practice it, because in my Go Kit, that's one of my things I have in my go kit you know with my laptop and stuff is the ability to send emails over hf or vhf and using a free program winlink express you know the people that are new to the hobby or haven't seen this video maybe this is something for you to try now uh, you know it, it's all about emergency communications that you know staying connected when things happen and it does happen because in my hurricane video you've seen the cell phone towers went down and the internet went down and you know someone like this even if there's not a zombie apocalypse even if you just want to practice this and put it in your repertoire and have fun with it email over HF it's totally possible today I'll show you real quick in this video uh, to update and of course you could go back and look at my previous video but again it's so much easier with this ICOM 7300 just a simple USB cable from the back of the 7300 to the computer Fire up the software, maybe adjust the levels a little bit for audio, and away you go. You can send emails to through different email servers in different parts of the world or different parts of your country. And although a little slower and more nostalgic, can you do it? What happens when your cell phone or computer just disappears? Could you send an email? Well, let's check it out now. WinLink Express and WinMore HF email, sending email over ham radio. This is Ham Radio Concepts. So here's the ICOM 7300 that I'm using. The only thing I want to show you that you need to make sure, go into the menu. I'm just connected with a USB cable in the back, right to the USB on my computer. It's got a COM port. And go into menu, go into set, and on the connectors, you know, page. Page two, data off mod. You want to set that to USB because if that's on anything else like mic or accessory, that's the jack in the back that it's going to be using. So USB and then page three here, data mod USB as well. And that is going to route the audio, you know, uh, through the USB in the back. And your CIV is default, like 94H, and there's reasons you may have to change that. But that CIV address right there is basically your cat you know, your computer interface uh, address. So you need to note that if you have to. But that's pretty much all I have to really do in order to get this thing talking over the USB. At this point, the mic won't pass audio. It's just going through the USB on the back. The link is in the description of this video, winlink.org. And on this page, there's some information you can read about Gateway, you know, station news and stuff like that, what it is. And I just saw this. Short videos help new and experienced operators. Wow. I... Of course, that's why I'm here is making videos, but I just saw that. So then this is a, a great idea to do this and update from the last video I did. Now, if you go to user programs, this is where you would download it. There's several programs here, Outpost and some other stuff, and it shows you the abilities and the features of those programs. We're going to use WinLink Express. That's what I use, and it's a free download. It may ask you, it'll pop up and say, hey, you know, it's provided, you know, and made by volunteers. And, you know, if you want to register, you can. You don't have to. Nobody's asking for money to use it. But just remember who puts the work into this. And um, if you feel so inclined, you can support them. Okay. But uh, let me show you this software here, WinLink Express. So in the WinLink Express software, once you install it, okay, you're probably not going to have all these emails. That's from me before. So in the settings, you can go into the WinLink Express setup, put in your call sign, any information for contact, email, for password requests and all that, and hit update. The next thing you're going to do, if you're using, in this situation, the 7300 ICOM and the USB cable, you know, there's a lot of different formats here for, you know, WinLink. Packet and stuff for two meters and even Telnet if you want to just check your email over the internet. But let's keep it radio related. We'll go to WinMore. This is going to be your sound card interface, you know, sound card based HF email. And hit open session. And you'll get this uh, little sound card TNC window. And this is going to show you like a waterfall here. So you can see where this signal is. And you can see uh, your constellation for the eye quality here uh, to see, you know, your quality of your signal. 
Now, <clears throat> this receive right here, you're going to want to have that set. You can see if it's, you know, right here in the middle, you, your audio out from the radio to the software or computer in. You don't want this thing overdrive, you know, way up here in the red. You want to keep it in the green, okay? Now, here, this opens. This is your, basically your session. In the session window here, you're going to go to settings and go to radio setup. Now, this is where you would connect, you know, which, I mean, there's a lot of different radios in here, AGF Marine and Lcraft and Kenwood and Icom and Yesu and whatever. So, if you have a 7300, I have mine set just a 7300. ICOM address by default is 94, uh, CIV address, and the USB digital, you know, and there is uh, very many ways of setting it up. If you don't have this set up and you're using an external sound card interface or some other means, uh, you would not really get the ability of when you change, you know, in the channel. Here, if you go like this and I click on this, it automatically sets my radio to the right frequency and... Uh, keys the radio and all that so you could do it you know vox sound card style you can do it interface directly to your radio like this um but this is again why this is way more easier than my original video a couple of years ago because i don't have to use a tnc or homemade cables or whatever just plug a usb cable into the 7300 and away you go and if you have other radios that'll support it with a usb you could do it that way too the first thing you're going to want to do is go to channel selection because during the day or the night, you may have different propagation. At night, you're not going to use, you know, uh, 10 meters or, or uh, 20 meters. You're going to use, you know, 80, 40, something like that. So we're going to update the table via the Internet. And it's going to ask me, do, you know, it's going to download the new tables and the prediction and path for, you know, reliability estimates. And you can see these are all the WinLink sites here. It's going to update the list. And that way I can get an idea. Again, I don't use this as 100% if it's in the red or if it's in the green that it is going to work. You may not have propagation to that wind link, uh, you know, node. But it'll give you a good idea of what's, you know, possible. As soon as this updates, okay. Now we go to the top of the list. Now it says, it, you know, estimates that these here in the green are the, you know, paths that would be most reliable, you know, 20 meters uh, some 40 meters during the day and it'll show the mode the grid square in case you have a beam and you want to you know rotate or face it to that you know node distance bearing okay so here's what we'll do we'll start with this one this is 20 meters uh, hotel india 8 charlie oscar echo and when i click on it it automatically sets the radio usb digital mode and it sets it to the frequency of that uh, node and you can see the dial frequency is uh, different here than you know the center frequency because this is uh, upper sideband you know, you're going to set the dial here to one a 14109.5 which the software already did with the radio and then if it comes up and says it's a tad off frequency it'll show you so you know tune down 20 hertz or it'll do that for you and watch this i'm going to hit start and it's going to now send a connect request to that wind link station. Now, if you have the radio on, you know, the volume on, you will hear it when it comes back to you. So far, I don't hear the thing coming back yet. So, and then after a couple more attempts, here it is. Now it's showing me it's connected. If you can hear that on my radio. All right. 1,487 kilometers. All right, now it's making, you know, right here, KJ4YZI has 1,440 minutes remaining. All right, it's now connected. Now, at this point, I'll turn this down here because you can hear that. At this point, what it's doing is if I have anything in my outbox, it's going to send the email. If I have any emails waiting, it's going to receive them and download them. And again, it's like 300 baud. It's very slow. Okay, so uh, not very slow. I mean, it's only an email, but if you're sending, you know, something that's, extremely long. It's going to take a little while. So you can hear it still. My radio sends a request and then it comes back, you know, bits and pieces back and forth, back and forth. So this is in Santo Domingo Republic uh, of Dominica. And uh, 
So you can see it's still connecting here, okay? And uh, right now I don't have any emails in my outbox or none in my inbox. So it's pretty much going to just, you know, you know, listen, okay, nothing here, nothing here, okay, and then it's going to sign off. But you can see right now, right here, that it's still going. There you go. And it ended session right here. Zero messages sent, zero messages received, and that's it. Then what it's going to do is it's going to, you know, my station will say, okay, ending, and then it'll send my call sign over the air. And you'll see that up here, uh, or, you know, over CWID. So what I'll do now is, as you get the idea of what's happening, uh, it's, you know, it's a simple thing. I'll send an email real quick. We'll see how long it's going to take to send the email. And uh, if you, there it is, disconnecting, then it sends my ID, and that's it. Uh, so I'm going to send an email and, and I encourage you if you want to try, I'd like to check on this and, and I'll be checking on this, you know, from RF, I could check my emails, uh, through the telnet session, but it's not as fun as when you're out there in the field doing it on HF. Okay. So, you, you know, it'll be KJ4YZI at winlink.org, uh, is, you know, where the, what you'd send to me and I would get it in here. And let me know um, in the messages here, you know, just write me an email and say, hey, you know, I got work. I'm using whatever radio and whatever antenna and which, you know, how far the node is that you're connecting to. Just send it a test. And, and I don't know if I'm going to make it a constant, you know, we're going to play email all day long on here. But I'd like to check it in the next couple of weeks after the video or whenever. I'll keep an eye on it and see how you're doing with it. So let me send an email real quick. So this session is over. I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do is close this. I'm going to leave the program open. Okay, I'm going to go to new message. And I'll send it to, um, I don't even know who I'm going to send it to. Uh, I'll send it to John. Oh, hold on. All right, let's do this. And then um, test. Win more. Win link. Whatever. All right. Why is I guess my battery is my keyboard dead again. Okay. Right there. All right. So post to Outbox like this. Send as a WinLink message, right? Post to Outbox. All right. We're going to open this again. I know that station is uh, reachable here. And there's Riddy right on top of it. So I wonder if I can go, you know. It seems that the guys on Riddy and everybody, nobody takes into consideration when they pick a frequency that there may be a uh, wind link station there. We're going to try to do it anyways. Here we go. Start. Okay. That connected. You can hear it. With the Riddy. Pretty resilient here. I'm pausing and fast forwarding here. The Riddy is still there, but the email is still sending and receiving over the top of it. Okay. And that's not, you know, again, uh, he just popped in there. I'm not inter I'm not trying to interfere with anybody, but come on. I was sending an email, and he wanted to start. Maybe he can't hear me. I don't know. But uh, we got to learn how to share these frequencies. So there's a lot more room on 20 for Riddy. Go down a little bit instead of sitting on top of a RMS Express gateway, but we'll handle it. So it's in a sending, sending state, <clears throat> and you can see sending uh, how many bits, you know, or whatever. And then once it sends... And I'm just trying to see how long it takes, you know, show you how long it takes to send an email. Just a, a quick email right there. So 52 seconds to send 192 bytes and it's disconnected. So one message is sent. So the purpose behind that is just to show you, you know, yeah, it's not the most efficient. And I already know it. The guy, hey, listen up. The guy that's going to say, oh, this is stupid. I got internet. Okay, good. I hope your phone quits tonight. I really hope your phone and the cell phone tower falls over tonight. And I'll be able to send an email or an emergency disaster or just for fun. That's what ham radio is about is I have these options. I have these ways I could do these things. And I like to keep up on my knowledge and remember and refresh because, you know, we've got hurricane season coming. And guess what? You've seen it in my hurricane video. Internet does go down. And when it does, I'll be able to, you know, pass forms back and forth and stay in communication with locals or distant people just because. So. Thanks, everybody, for watching. 7-3. This is KJ4YZI.